Australia offers a high standard of living, excellent health care system, a stable economy in a diverse culture. And so why not move with your family to Australia as a direct permanent resident? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emanuela and for returning viewers, I say a big welcome back to you and thank you for all your support, liking my videos, sharing and then sticking to this channel. I appreciate you. In today's video, I'll be sharing how to move with your family to Australia as a permanent residence. Now let's look at uh, the eligibility criteria. So to be eligible, there are some things that are to be considered that you need to have the first thing is the age yes your age you must be under the age of 45 years to be eligible for this permanent residence you also need to score a minimum of 65 points in any of the programs from the scoring grid that takes into consideration your age your education your work experience ties to Australia. You can also use the points calculator in the official in Home Affairs Australia government website which I will link in the description box of this video to also know your eligibility of any of the programs I will mention. The second thing to consider is your English language proficiency standard. Yes, you must be able to demonstrate your proficiency in English language by taking an approved English language test or assessment, right? such as the IELTS General or the TOEFL, IBT, the PTE, OET, Cambridge C1. So it could be any of the English assessments. So for the IELTS General, you need to score the CLB7, the TOEFL, you, you need to have score 25, the PTE, you need to score or have 65, OEC, you need to actually have at least your B level, Cambridge C1, you need to have 169. The third thing to be considered would be your skills assessment. So you must have your skills assessed by a relevant authority in Australia. So if your skill that you're applying with is in demand in Australia and then you meet the requirement, then you are qualified to apply. And so the fourth thing is your occupation. So your occupation should be part of the occupation in demand on the Australian shortage occupation list, which I'll also link in the description box of this video. The next thing to consider should be your health and character. You should be able to show health and character reports. You will be required to undergo a medical uh, examination and provide also a police clearance certificate. And so if you're wondering why Australia and why should I consider Australian PR? So let's look at some of the benefits. The first one to look at is that you can leave, travel, walk anywhere within Australia. The second thing to consider is that you can take up any study course while in Australia. The next is that you can get or you will get a social security benefit after two years of your stay in Australia. The next is that you can also sponsor your immediate family members for their own PR. You can also apply for government jobs in Australia. More so, you can visit uh, and work anywhere in New Zealand freely. After this, you can also proceed to get your Australian citizenship. That one also comes with its own benefits. You can also get free medical insurance, you can get subsidized education loans for your dependent family members. You get also first home owner grants of about uh, 15,000 Australian dollars to help you buy your first property while in Australia. Alright, so let's look at the procedures. What are the procedures to permanent residence? The first thing is that you need to choose the right type of visa or the right visa 
category based on your skills and qualification the three most popular options are the skilled independent visa subclass 189 a skilled nominated visa subclass 190 and a temporary residence visa which is also called the skilled regional visa subclass 887 you need to apply to any of those visa categories for more information on the visa category all right so check on the official website of the australian government uh, so that you will know more about this visa category the next thing to consider is the fact that you need to submit an expression of interest by submitting an EOI, which is the expression of interest through Skill Select. Now, what is Skill Select? Skill Select is an online platform that allows skilled workers to submit all their details and then be considered for skilled visa in Australia. So, the Skill Select process takes about eight to ten weeks after submitting all of your details. You will then receive an invitation to apply, which is usually called the ITE, right? ITE stands for Invitation to Apply for PR. So please note that you only receive the ITA if you meet all the requirements selected from the EOI pool with the highest EOI ranking. After receiving this ITA, you need to apply for a visa within 60 days of receiving the ITA. The application process all right, involves providing documents for your personal details, work experience, your education, your skills assessment, your English language proficiency, your health and character. After which, you will then wait for a decision, which usually takes a while depending on your visa category. Right, so it can be a few months or up to a year. Once you get your visa, you'll be assessed and then when you assess and you meet all of the requirements, you then get a PR. So with this PR, you can then apply to work in Australia permanently. So it could be a lengthy process, but it is worth the effort with all the benefits of working or living in Australia that I have mentioned. First thing I'd like you to do is actually to go to this uh, uh, emi.omaffairs.gov.au. That's the uh, official website for Australian uh, sites to go to to get all those visa requirements that I talked about. You have the 189 visa. You can see it here on the screen, the skilled independent visa subclass 189. Okay, it's just like the Canada Federal, all right? So with this, you can live and work in Australia if you meet the requirements. So when you scroll through, you can click on eligibility. It will tell you more about this visa. The second one you have is visa 190, permanent resident visa like Canada PNP. All right, guys, it's like Canada PNP. Okay, so this is the permanent resident visa. With this, you get nominated by a state in Australia, then you leave in Australia for two years. The third one is visa 491. It's a pathway to PR as well. Yeah, you have to live in a region for up to five years. Firstly, you live and work in the re in that region that nominates you for three years. You meet the requirements by working in any occupation of your choice, make up to about a 75 hours, work as a fortnight. You have up to 55,000 Australian dollars as your annual income. Then you can apply for a permanent resident after three years. Okay. So for any of them, you need to score at least 65 points minimum when adding your points from your age experience your education your english proficiency of course you need to have about 65 points however there's good news at the end for people that might not be able to meet up to that point i'll let you know later in the course of this video also note that visa 189 has its own occupation list so if you have to apply for visa 189 you have to go through where the, you have the occupation list over here and then find out uh, what uh, jobs are applicable there. So if your own job falls in that area, then you can then apply or right? start putting in the documentation. The same thing goes with Visa 190. It has done different occupation list, okay? And then for Visa 491 has the same thing. So if you apply for any of this Visa uh, type, 
your occupation must fall under the occupations or jobs that are needed in that uh, visa category. So please take note. So if you have a job, if you have an, if you if you want to go for uh, visa one eight nine, and your job or your occupation is not on that visa one eight nine occupation list, you might not they might not consider your application. So kindly take note of that. Okay, so. Different occupations have their own assessing bodies as well. So you need to assess your, your document before you apply. So for example, you have for nurses, they go through the assessing body called the AHPRA, that's what we call APRA. For engineers, they go through Engineers Australia. For handiwork person, you go through uh, a, a, a trades recognition Australia. For other healthcare workers, you go through Aqua, which is ACWA. For other workers like customer service, HR, management, just generally management, you go through Vetasis. And next, you go to www.omafest.gov.au, which is the site I'm on right now. So you go to this site. Check out the occupation session, find your occupation, and then read up for more information as to what and what exactly you need. All right. This process you can actually do it by yourself. You know that you have to pay for your assessment. So, so some regions will ask you for proof of funds because that's another thing that people are really skeptical about. Is it would they ask for proof of funds? Yes. Some regions will ask for proof of funds. Not all of them. So even if the actual people is there about uh, like uh, $3,000 per person, that's been your bank statement. Okay, so we know also know that visa fee is between 4200 to about 4500 uh, Australian dollars. I think for this place, you can see it here. You have about 4240 Australian dollars dollar here this is the page for the points calculator all links will be in the description box of this video so, so this is a points calculator and then it will use you use to start doing your calculation about all the points according to the visa class that you're applying to visa 189 you have to get 65 points all by yourself not that you get this five points and your partner gets five points. You need to get this five points, boom, and then you are good to go for that visa class. Then for visa category 190, if you go to the states, the states will give you additional five points during your application of your uh, expression of interest. So, for example, if you're applying for visa 190, which you can see here, that's a skill nominated visa of class 190, and then you finish calculating all your points and it's not up to 65 points, you, you just don't worry. Once you are applying for your expression of interest, that's your EOI, the region, the states that you're applying to will give you extra five points probably to just make up your 65 points. And then also know that for the VISTA 491, which is the skilled work regional provisional VISTA, that's subclass 491, that's the last one here. That's one, if you apply and then your points are not up to 65 points as recommended by the Australian government, the region that you're going to that has nominated you, all right, according to your job, uh, job all right, that you're applying, it will give you 15 points. So I know that that is the one that most people apply to. So 15 points will be added to you while you're applying for your EOI if you're actually going through the skilled worker region provisional visa subclass 491. Okay, so on this page, you have all the assessing bodies here. All right, so if you scroll up here, you have the first one here, you have the A -A 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 -C -A, that's for architect. Here you have the one for Australian Computer Society Incorporated, all right, and the rest of them here, guys. You have all of the, uh, if you're a pharmacist, you have Australian Pharmacy Council. So if you want to know all the requirements, you just click on the link that you find here and you find out what the body needs or requires you to submit the skilled subclass one is now mentioned it already. And then you have the points calculator. Now take, for example, practically for points calculator, let's say you're going for visa 189, click on visa 189, scroll down and they ask me for my age. So let's click on it. And I then say my age is about to, let's say 25 to 33 years. And then another menu drops and you have, how would you rate your English language ability? I click on it and then I say proficient English. 
All right, I go down again, it brings up another sub menu and you have overseas skilled employment outside Australia. I click on it and they're asking for how many years of the experience I have. I can click on at least three, but five years, but less than five years. Or I click on at least five, but less than eight. And it gives me another sub menu and it has Australian skilled employment. I click on it again. And they're asking how 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 many uh do I have? I can just click on less than one year, and then I go again. Educational qualification. They're asking now, what is your highest educational qualification? I click on it here, and then I come to at least bachelor's degree from an Australian uh, institution, or at least bachelor's qualification from another educational institution that is of a recognized standard. I then click on it. It gives me another drop down menu. Do you have at least one degree diploma or trade qualification from an Australian educational institution that meets the Australian study requirements? And I said, no. I got specialist education qualification. Do you have a master's degree by research or doctorate degree by educational Australian educational institution? I then click on no. All right, because you have to be sincere with them. Okay. So you have credentialing, community language. Have you been National Education Authority for translator? I just click on no. And then you click go again. And they have studied in regional Australia. Have you studied in Australia before? I click on no. And then they go again. What's your partner skills? What's your partner skills you have here? You are single or you have a partner. I click on it again. And then you find out you complete a professional year in Australia. I click on no. And then it gives you your total point summary. So for age, I have 30. For English, I have 10. For work experience outside Australia, I have 10. For qualifications, I have 15. For the other ones, I have zero. For partner skills, 10. For my total point is 75 points, guys. That means I had made more than the 65 points that is recorded. You need to have 65 points. So this points calculator is actually good. It will help you to prepare yourself. That's after all, you have to look at how the process goes. So if you look right here, you have starts. You check your occupation, if your occupation is on the skilled occupation list and you have you need to have 65 points to be eligible. Secondly, you need to submit your expression of interest in the skill select. Thirdly, you need to wait for invitation to apply for this visa. All right, so no matter the visa, you have to wait after submitting your expression of interest in skill select. Okay, so after that, you then go and wait for your invitation to apply for this visa. And how after that you gather up your documents once your uh once they give you a go ahead to apply for your uh visa then you apply one more thing i uh, so you need to actually check all of these high hyperlinks here to find out what they mean all the best to everyone applying and so please note that all the links that i've shared here that or i got all this information from I will put them in the description box of this video so that you can also go and make your due diligence, make your research, find out the jobs in shortage occupation list for Australia before you start your application. Thank you very much for watching this video to the very end and see you in my next video. Keep learning.